get a chance, look at these images at a retail store display where there are a lot of different types of TVs. Pause the disc playback on one of these images and look at how many colors of red, green, or blue you might see. Better yet, use the color bar test pattern. TV set manufacturers would tell you to buy the set displaying the color you like. We would tell you to buy the set where the primary colors of red, green, and blue match the system standards. Yes, you might like another color better, but it will not display any of the colors in the video signal the way they should look. While you are there in front of all these sets, take a look at the dark parts of the picture. Again, it is easier to use a test pattern than a picture. If you look at the pluge on a properly calibrated CRT, you'll see almost no difference in the light level of the dark parts of the picture. In the newer technologies, there is a much larger difference in levels of video near black. That brighter level might be attractive as seen on the showroom floor, but it is completely wrong for all of the video you would ever watch at home. To be fair, we know the majority of consumers will buy a set based on their liking one color quality better than another and or liking a brighter picture. Manufacturers are counting on this to get you to purchase their set. These newer technologies make it easy for manufacturers to deliver a product that goes seriously out beyond our system standards. What we believe is necessary is to have the option of adjusting a memory in the set that will take it back to system standards you'll never see the potential of the system without it. So many people are amazed at our images because the sets we use have the capability of properly reproducing the system canvas. We'd like to move to the production side with an introduction to the care and effort which goes into creating high definition content. Welcome to PhotoChem the post-production facility we're using to assemble this program. PhotoChem has been involved in servicing all of the major motion picture studios and television networks. We're getting set up for Alan Davio, who is going to supervise the super high-definition transfer of our restaurant sequence from Digital Video Essentials. Alan shot this for us on 35 millimeter film back in 2001. It was originally transferred to a 1080p image which at the time was the practical limit for high-definition video production. Nowadays, we can do much better. We've selected a 4K resolution, long held to be the upper limit of what you could get from 35mm film. Even higher resolutions are available for transferring larger film formats to video. A 4K image has 4096 horizontal elements or pixels, and is more than twice the horizontal resolution of our 1080p format. The vertical resolution of the 4K system is dependent on the aspect ratio of the image. Since our primary image is 1.78 to 1 in aspect ratio, the vertical resolution of the 4K transfer is about 2,302 lines. That 4096 by 2302 image will then be down converted to 1920 by 1080. You'll be able to make a comparison between this 4K transfer, which is then down converted to 1080p, versus the 1080p transfer Alan originally supervised for us in 2001. While they are making sure everything is set up properly for the transfer, we'll take some time to explain a bit about what is going on. The film is passed through the scanner. Light goes through the film and is then split into three colors, red, green, and blue. As human beings, we only see three colors of light, so there is only a need to process and transmit signals representing those three colors. Back in the early days of standard definition color TV, it was necessary to provide a black and white signal for the older black and white TV sets. That signal, mathematically known as Y, is derived from the RGB color signals by adding portions of the red, green, and blue signals together. Of course, if you present a color TV set with a black and white signal, there isn't enough information for it to produce a color picture. Two more channels of video information are needed. They are the color difference signals. You've seen the three channel connections on the component video output on the back of DVD players. They are labeled Y, PB, PR. 
that P is an indication they are analog signals. You'll also read about Y, CR, CB signals. The C means the signal is digital. In RGB space, all three channels are full bandwidth. In the Y, CR, CB domain, only the Y channel is full bandwidth. The CR and CB channels are half the bandwidth of Y. Alan, if you would take over from here. The location was a real restaurant, and Joe Kane wanted us to put some visual clues in terms of the olive oil, the wine, the various colors of the vegetables, uh, to tell people what was real. We're shooting in a real restaurant with natural daylight and our own HMI light coming through windows and being bounced in uh, to provide the ambient light. We have a salad with carrots. Uh, we have uh, the broiled chicken in the background, which we like, the salmon. We look at the salmon, we think we can get a little more color out of the salmon, and of course, beautiful dessert that leads us right over to our people. One of the decisions made was to, to warm up this shot just a little bit, a little less blue in the highlights, and it provides a bit of a, a nicer, warmer skin tone, and particularly helps the, the color of her jacket and the, the, just the general ambiance of the restaurant. So when we start on the carrots, we see that we're very careful not to let them go magenta. If anything, we used uh, the hue control to keep them in the orange category. The chicken here, we're looking at it, we want to take the highlight down just a little bit, and then we go back and check the carrot salad again, and I think we might have tweaked the, uh, the black level just a little bit up. Here, as we go from the chicken to the salmon, careful about the highlight on the plate, we look at the salmon, we try to use a magenta saturation uh, just to see if we can get more color in the salmon. The, the magenta saturation works too much on the tomatoes and not enough on the salmon, so we went to red instead and came down and highlighted a little bit. We check it against the transition to the dessert. We found that the red saturation is a little too much in the raspberries. So here, we can lock our setting on the salmon plate and do a transition in the camera move over to the dessert. And here you'll see the uh, saturation come down on the berries and a more natural looking substance takes us to the people. And again, that warmer finish helps very much. And again, all of our color clues, be it flowers or the wine and the water, the bottles, uh, give people a sense of a realistic, a naturalistic looking restaurant and uh, gives us our setting so that the color uh, feels extremely natural and uh, very, very accurate. All of the clues that this very airy, naturalistic restaurant scene present to the viewer will let you know how effectively you've used the video essentials process of the, the test patterns and what have you to get accurate color. And here the scene with the clues that we spoke about and the wine, the water bottles, etc., and the very, very natural skin tones will tell you that you have indeed gotten your color balance correct in the whites, grays, and blacks and that your uh, saturation and hue are accurate and that uh, you're looking at the picture you should be seeing. The color correction took place in the RGB domain and the signal was then converted to Y, CR, CB for storage. As much as Y, CR, CB occupies two-thirds of the space of the full bandwidth RGB signal, that amount of compression is not nearly enough to fit the high-definition signal on a blue laser format optical disc. The already compressed signal of Y, CR, CB needs to be compressed further by at least a factor of 30 to 1. 50 to 1 would be even better, and 100 to 1 would be ideal. Let's say we wanted to transmit a high resolution still image for 30 seconds. In the analog world, we transmit it repeatedly for 30 seconds. In the digital world, we could transmit the image once and then tell the receiver to store it and repeat it for 30 seconds. At 30 pictures per second, that's a 900 to 1 compression ratio with absolutely no loss in picture quality. In reality, the complete frame has to be transmitted a bit more often, just in case someone tunes in just after the picture is finished.